Hey everyone, so in today's video, I'm going to be breaking the laws of my channel and making something I'm actually like pretty satisfied with. <laughs> feels, feels really weird saying that. So last week's video was a little bit like sad, I guess, but honestly, that's just normal. And not every video I make is going to have like results that I'm super happy with. Anyways, for this video, I'm going to be using um, what I've decided to name the fancy sketchbook. <laughs> I know it's like, it's super childish, but um, that's what I've decided on and it clicked. I'm also going to be breaking a second law of um, the last coffee bean channel. Like you guys are only 30 seconds in and I'm already breaking two laws, but um, I'm doing concept sketches. I usually don't really do concept sketches. It's like really rare, but for this illustration, I decided that I want to make something that has a strong composition, uh, a strong meaning behind it. Um, like a meaning that many people can sort of just get their own interpretation out of, but isn't super vague. So um, it's, it's kind of a basic meaning, to be honest. Like a lot of people have done uh, like, variations of this sort of message in art. Um, but I wanted to put my spin to it and just have fun illustrating random silly things. So I feel like if I didn't do this concept sketch page in my sketchbook, I wouldn't have had such weird doodle ideas in the actual thing. And yeah, I feel like I pushed the idea further than it was originally going to be by doing this page. So this is when the sketch process begins for this illustration and I started off breaking a third law on this channel which is using rulers. I thought I could use a ruler and um, yeah, no, <laughs> I ended up just doing my normal messy lines. Anyway, so the sketch process for this illustration was actually really fun to do but also very difficult because in my concept sketch page I didn't really plan out much. Uh, I didn't. I planned out individual objects, but I didn't plan out where they'd actually go. And some of the objects end up changing drastically because um, I wanted them to be a little crazier. So I I switched them up in the actual uh, the actual sketch. Like the birdhouse, for example, it started off with mushrooms coming out of it, but then I changed it into a rocket ship, and then. I end up putting the mushrooms on something else a little a little later on. Also, the fridge ends up having the air balloon instead of just a boring gold package. So that's another example of a change. And the vacuum, I just placed it randomly looped around the ladder, but I didn't actually plan that out originally. And yeah, it just it, that's why the sketch process took such a long time. I think it took me like two days, like two full days of sketching, I think, if I remember correct. So one of the main challenges of this illustration was basically just the, like, the sheer size of it. I'm used to working in my sketchbook, but this summer I've been pushing myself to make big illustrations and like challenge myself a bit and um, like get a little bit out of my comfort zone. The issue I feel is that I've been pushing myself a little too hard recently. So um, I was doing too much at once, I feel. Like in my previous video, The Hobbit House, I was both doing something way bigger than normal and trying out a new medium or like a kind of new medium. I've used acrylics before, but definitely not often at all. So this video, the, the main difference I feel from The Hobbit video is that yeah i'm challenging myself by doing something really large scale and like kind of planned out and i'm paying much more attention to composition and um shapes and stuff like that but i'm using a medium that i'm super comfortable with and i'm using a style that i'm super comfortable with or maybe not a style but um a subject matter that i'm super comfortable with it's not a landscape painting it's um just random objects things things that are <laughs> silly i guess um yeah 
So I'm definitely not giving up on acrylics. I feel like I just need to practice it and make simple things with acrylics. Maybe I'll even make a video um, practicing with acrylics, uh, learning how to like, use them a little better. I'm also definitely gonna look for some tutorials here on YouTube and maybe even pick up a couple books. So if you have any recommendations, I'd love to hear it in the comments. So this is when I start the line art process for this illustration. And I actually did the line art with colored pencils because I have so much more colors for colored pencils compared to pens. And also they're a little less stressful to use than fine liners in my opinion. The only drawback to colored pencil line art on this paper specifically is that the paper is so much more textured and better quality than my sketchbook paper. So because of the texture, the I couldn't get as detailed as I wanted in some areas. But I guess that's actually a good thing because any more detailed than this and I probably would have died. <laughs> Anyways, I sped up the process for the line art quite a bit in like editing just because it's it's kind of boring. <laughs> like even in real life, I was so bored um, doing this part of the illustration. Thankfully, it wasn't stressful though. Um, it was still kind of relaxing, just a bit mundane, I guess. The only hard part about the line art uh, for me personally was choosing which color to put where, because since I didn't plan this thing out color-wise, um, I didn't know which color was going where, so I kind of had to like guess which things I would want to be lighter and it turned out all right. Like it actually worked very well, but not in the way I was expecting. So this is when I begin the coloring process for this illustration. And uh, yeah, I'm using some random paint brushes. The detail ones are the ones that I use the most. So the really tiny ones, those were extremely, extremely helpful. I didn't use the big one at all. I'm also using the Kuretake Ganze Tambi watercolors. I butchered the name, but I absolutely adore these watercolors. These are my favorite watercolor set. As you could probably tell from my tone there, that was that was extremely hard for me to say because I love my White Knight watercolors, but these are just something else. They're so vibrant and the colors have the potential to be applied like pretty thickly like some of the pastel colors especially they go on very thick and almost opaque they're still transparent no matter how thick you go they still um they dry transparent kind of so they're definitely not a replacement for gouache but they're amazing i really had fun using these and honestly i need to use these more often the main reason I don't use them super often on my channel specifically is because of the size of the palette. It's quite big. Um, I kind of splurged and got the 48 color set. It was on a really big sale though. So I think it was like $68 or something like that um, on the Canadian Amazon. But I recently got this really thin palette as you could see down there and that helped me have more room and it fit perfectly on my desk even though my desk like the drawing area of my desk is kind of small anyways while i was fangirling about these watercolors i forgot to mention something i wanted to kind of talk about was um, the color scheme of this artwork so i made zero planning for this um, artwork color wise and that was mainly because I tried doing it on Procreate. I tried making like a rough color guide thing and it looks so ugly that it would be illegal to show it on my channel. So of course I'm gonna do just that. That complete abomination of a color scheme just really tanked my inspiration for a bit but then I just decided like I'm wasting so much time I want to get a video out before the two week mark and so I just jumped straight into the coloring process not really knowing 
what the background color specifically was going to be. That was the main like uh, puzzle for me to figure out, I guess. I just solved it by coloring the objects first and then deciding what I wanted to be the color behind it. It ended up just being a gradient. So it went from dark blue at the bottom to signify sadness, I guess. And then it went up to a yellow color, like classic cheerful yellow. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyways, the box was really fun to work with, like fitting everything into a box and then having them kind of explode out of the box. It was really fun and I'm glad I controlled myself and didn't make the smoke too much. Like I feel like the composition has a solid shape. There's just a puffy cloud at the top and a rectangle. I really like how that looks and I really want to experiment with that a little more. Like. I don't know what it's called in art terms. I think it's like positive and negative space. Pretty sure that's kind of what's going on here. I want to experiment with it a lot more in some similar illustrations. I actually already have a couple ideas and I'm really excited to get start on, started on them. Um, it will probably not be next week, but the week after I have some plans for like another similar kind of illustration. So I guess now is a good time to kind of explain how I came to this concept in the first place. I just realized I didn't talk at all about that. Anyways, I spent a couple of days after the Hobbit painting kind of art blocked. Then I kind of got out of that art block after doodling a bit in my sketchbook. I posted that on my Instagram, the sketchbook pages I completed. So if you're curious to see them, um, <laughs> A little self promo I guess the link to my Instagram's in the description so anyways um, back to what I was kind of explaining after those sketchbook pages I found it so hard to start a new video for some reason like I kept scrolling through YouTube scrolling through Instagram and Pinterest for inspiration and I ended up just completely wasting three whole days of my precious summer break just on the internet and it felt really bad like I wasn't getting anything done I wasn't being productive I was just wasting my days away um, scrolling <laughs> and watching videos during that time I did do a couple like little sketches in my sketchbook but it was nothing really significant so um, yeah I realized the issue was I was putting way too much pressure and I was in taking way too much inspiration all at once. Like I'm all for using reference photos and I used a ton of reference photos in this illustration, but I searched up the reference photos after I experimented with the concept sketches. So I wasn't just constantly looking at other artists work and um, feeling overwhelmed. I just made something of my own uh, let out some emotion i guess and then i worried about the whole like accuracy thing and started searching for a bunch of reference photos i won't list all the reference photos for this artwork because there's like a ton basically every single object almost i would search for one or two reference photos combine them or just use one of them there's a couple of objects here though that i just did from my head so like the key for example and um what else? Oh yeah, the person sitting, the chair and mouse and keyboard, the key, and just like other small things that I knew how to draw already. Anyway, so I'm pretty glad that I wasted three days doing nothing because without that, I don't think I would have thought up of this illustration. So over here, I use a little bit of gouache to correct some little mistakes. As you can see though, it's a lot more opaque than the watercolors. And uh, yeah, like that's why they're, they're really nice to use together. And yeah, <laughs> I'm running out of things to say. So uh, I'll, just, uh, I'll just let you enjoy this part.
All right, so this is the final day of working on this piece, if I remember correctly. And basically, I was trying to figure out on this day how to make the box stand out without it overpowering the details. Um, so yeah, I was, I was adding extra shadows and like nitpicking and uh, fixing the cup with gouache there and uh, adding blue highlights and whatnot. But then I figured out that using the white Posca pen to outline the box would be a really good technique to make it stand out. So that's what I do right now, yeah. <laughs> All right, so here's the final illustration. Um, I had such a fun time making this video and making this illustration. I hope it was enjoyable to watch and yeah, thank you so much for watching this far and supporting my channel and my art. If you liked this video, please consider leaving a little thumbs up and subscribing if you aren't subscribed already. I'm planning on making some more content like this because it was just really fun for me and experimenting more with negative and positive space, composition, doodles and stuff like that. So if you're interested in seeing that, um, stay tuned. But I'm also going to be doing some normal sketchbook session videos like, uh, like the one I made two videos ago, I think. Anyways. If you're watching this far, if you're still hearing me ramble at this point, comment down a random object doodle idea. I'll see you guys in the next video, which will probably be out in a week or two weeks as usual. Bye!